Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to be talking about safety equipment, and we'd like to thank Dave Farrell for liking and sharing our podcast. You want to start with gloves? Okay. So when you go into the hardware store, there's now a wide range of materials they use for work gloves. So it's not just jersey gloves anymore? And canvas and leather. That's about all they, they, they used to sell. You can get very specialized gloves now for your projects. So protection against burns, cuts, vibration. Hmm. You can improve your grip. So a good pair of leather gloves, though, are probably a nice basic glove to have in your toolbox. Leather is going to protect you from sparks, heat, cold, friction, and rough surfaces. Wow, who knew? And I would say one thing to do with a glove is to always try it on because some are very thick and less flexible, especially the design of the thumb. Mm -hmm. And some are very soft leathers and it's very high in dexterity. Mm -hmm. So you're able to grab small things if you're working on projects where you need to grab small nails or screws. Cowhide is the most common of the leathers. It's the least expensive and there's a a wide variety of grades. So again, it's, it's worth grabbing them and feeling them. If you get into deer skin, and this is, my dad loved these, so he worked at Sears Hardware, Mm -hmm. and every Christmas he would get me a new pair of deer skin gloves, (laughs) which I could never afford when I first started remodeling homes, and so I loved them. So deer skin is very soft, it's flexible, very long lasting, and it's very warm in the winter. Hmm. So that's a, a nice leather to look for. Pig skin is designed to be very tough and flexible, and then if you get a goat skin leather, it's strong, it's durable, it's flexible, and it's actually water resistant, the oils in goat. Really? And then when you're looking at your gloves, I like to lay them out flat, and if the thumb goes straight along the fingers, that's it, it's not as comfortable a design. If you get something that's called a wing design, so the thumb sticks straight out, so it'd be like at a 90 degree to the fingers, Mm -hmm. And this is going to allow you better movement. It's much more comfortable, especially if you're grabbing big objects. If you're grabbing, you know, uh, lumber or if you're grabbing big pipe wrenches, a wing design is better. And then the best is called a keystone design. So rather than like a a typical glove where the thumb is part of the palm, Mm -hmm. in a keystone design, the thumb is at a 90 degree angle and it's actually a separate piece of material and then they stitch it in place. And so you have the most flexibility, and it's also the most durable. Who knew? Another good basic glove, the one you mentioned, the jersey glove, is great for light gardening, yard work, painting, Mm -hmm. and they primarily protect you against friction. Jersey is (laughs) primarily... Jersey is primarily a knit fabric, Mm -hmm. but the first ones were made out of wool. What? So in medieval times, on the island of Jersey, Mm -hmm. off the shore of the Normandy coast in France, Mm -hmm. is where they produced these these gloves originally, and that's where the name stuck, Jersey Glove, and now it's primarily cotton. Wow, who knew? (laughs) Another good basic glove is a nitro glove, and this is synthetic rubber. It's tougher than natural rubber, and they use this for people who have an allergy to latex. Hmm. It's puncture resistant. This is excellent for painting, toilet repair, if you're working with oil, pesticides, or herbicides. Uh-huh. And uh, another in that line is then just your latex, your natural rubber. And this is actually from the sap of a rubber tree. Huh. And this is good for painting, for if you're working with oils. So if you're doing you're changing the oil, let's say, in a small engine, solvents. And then, you know, I like these for toilet repair. Hmm. Some of the new specialty gloves are using materials like spandex, hmm. which is a blend of polyester and polyurethane. It's much more durable than rubber, and it gives you more stretch and flexibility in your glove. Mm -hmm. You know, spandex is an anagram for expands. No way. (laughs) And then if you have projects that require heat or cut resistance, Mm -hmm. companies are adding Kevlar to the glove. (laughs) Wow. So Kevlar was invented in 1964 by Stephanie Mm Qualick. She was a a DuPont chemist. Mm -hmm. And these synthetic fibers are five times stronger than steel. Wild, huh? Uh -huh. So they originally used it in racing tires to replace the steel in the tires. And then they realized that they could be developed into bulletproof and stab-resistant vests. Mm -hmm. They use it in the space program. And I guess it saved a lot of lives in army helmets. And now your hands. (laughs) There you go. 
If you plan on doing a lot of projects with grinders, impact wrenches, even chainsaws, mm -hmm. you should be using an anti-vibration glove. Really? And these are designed to reduce vibration by 40%. Wow. Most of them use these silicone gel pads inside the glove. Mm -hmm. And what's wild is excessive use of these types of tools. They're even saying hammer drills. You can damage your nerves, your joints. I saw a bunch of pictures where people were, their fingers, tips of their fingers were turned black. Yuck. from consistent use of these tools that give off a lot of vibration. And just by using a glove like this, it's going to protect you against that. <laughs> Wild, huh? Yeah, if you want your fingers to say the same color. <laughs> One of the top-rated gloves for anti-vibration was from Steel, and that's S-T-I-H-L. Mm -hmm. You can get gloves that are cut-resistant. So if you're working with sheet metal or glass, if you're cutting drywall or cutting boxes, using utility knives... You've got cut-resistant gloves. Mm. You can get magnetic gloves. We talked about Magno Grip. That's M-A-G-N-O Grip. And right. it has little pads all over it, so it holds nuts and bolts, especially if you're doing automotive work. Mm -hmm. They have specialized grippy gloves, so they've got these rubber dots. It's a, grippy. It's a, <laughs> they use a, a composite rubber mm -hmm. that allows you to really hold on to things very well. <laughs> Heat-resistant gloves, so if you're working with circular saws and, and drills, so you're going to be grabbing hot saw blades or drill bits mm -hmm. for auto repair, for soldering. Uh, these heat resistant gloves are very nice, very high dexterity. And a couple of the top rated what were from Ironclad. Mm -hmm. That's I R O N C L A D. And then they have some that are touch screen gloves. So, Fancy. <laughs> so I've got a pair of Carhartt gloves. Mm -hmm. So it's a synthetic leather and spandex. So it's it's very flexible. They're just a, a really nice glove for you know protecting your hands against basic work. And then the fingertips are touchscreen. So when I'm using my smartphone and I want to listen to our podcast, <laughs> I don't have to take my gloves off. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> are we going to cover any other safety equipment or is it just going to be all about gloves? <laughs> so I think we're having a good pair of safety goggles is very important for any homeowner. Uh -huh. So thousands of eye injuries every year. And most of them could be prevented by wearing safety goggles. And this is right from the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health. Mm. They say that many of the injuries they see are just because someone wasn't wearing safety goggles. You know, even basic things around the house. If you're pounding on nails, that coating can break off while you're hammering. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're using a circular saw, a grinder, a sander, these little bits can be thrown into the air. And I've always worn goggles, and it's amazing how many times you can feel something or hear something hit the goggle. Right. One of the key things you're looking for... Well, with... it's so painful when you get something in your eye. Oh, terrible. Yeah, yeah. And at, most of the time, you know, it's just this dust or, right. you know, when you're sanding or whatever. I mean, it, it's terrible. Yep, so it's nice to have protection. One thing you're looking for is, is the label Z87 marked on the lens or the frame. And this is the American National Standards Institute. So in Canada, it's going to be C. S-A-Z-94.3. In the U.S., it's Z87 or Z87+. Plus. Mm -hmm. So Z87 is basic impact. Z87 plus is high impact. And the test for compliance is they use a quarter-inch steel ball and they shoot it at 102 miles an hour at the glasses. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got to protect you. Well, if you're ever in that situation, you'll be protected. <laughs> So for chemicals, you want chemical splash resistant goggles, right? And you're looking for something that's going to be wrapped around your eyes. Mm -hmm. I would look for something vented and something that says anti fog because it's just terrible. <laughs> you know the amount of times because a lot of times if I'm wearing a mask and goggles, right. they'll, they'll fog up. But the the anti fog, they really do a nice job. And some of the top rated eyewear is from Dewalt Edge Eyewear, so E D G E. And then 3M uh, does a really nice job, and you'll see 3M stuff in all the hardware stores. Mm -hmm. If you get any chemicals in your eye, you want to flush it with water immediately for at least 15 minutes. And most medical professionals say don't wait to remove your contact lenses. Just start flushing with water immediately and then get medical help. If you get particles in your eye, you never want to rub it. You want to flush it with water. If the particle doesn't wash out, you want to keep your eye closed, put a soft cloth over it, and get medical help. 
if you it's ever, hard not to rub it, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah I mean it's, it's your it's first t- aid yeah. instinct is just to <laughs> go after it. If you cut your eye or puncture it, you never want to wash your eye out. You do not want to remove an object if you get it in your eye. Mm -hmm. You want to shield your eye with some cupped object and then get medical help immediately. Now for hearing protection, long-term exposure to high levels of noise can cause permanent hearing loss. Really? It kills the nerve endings in the inner ear and they found that the hairs that move back and forth in that fluid inside your inner ear Loud noises can actually cause them to vibrate back and forth so much that they break. Mm -hmm. And once they're damaged, they don't grow back. That's a bummer. That's a while. Short-term exposure to loud noises can cause ringing in your ears, short-term hearing loss. And one expert was saying, if you have to yell over a noise, Mm -hmm. you need hearing protection. (laughs) So noise level is measured in decibels, Mm -hmm. and it was named after Alexander Graham Bell. How is that named after him? Decibel, Alexander Bell. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think that was wrong. <laughs> so there's three popular types of hearing protection, foam, pre-molded, and then earmuffs. Mm-hmm. The foam earplugs were designed in the 70s, and the way you use these is you slowly roll them into a tight cylinder, so you're using your thumb and your fingers Mm -hmm. and then you need to use the opposite hand you're going to reach over the top of your head and pull up and out on your ear while you're using the hand on the same side as your ear to force it into the ear canal and then you let go and then it expands inside your ear so you're going to look super cool doing this (laughs) so it's a process but it's wild if you watch videos of somebody putting this in when you reach over your head and you pull up and out it's wild how the ear canal opens up Uh and so it allows you to put this in really easy most of these foam are going to give you about 30 decibels in reduction because it completely fills the ear canal Mm -hmm. so it really does a a nice job and they're very inexpensive you can get these into in packages i used to always buy the packs where they're all disposable right so if we're working on projects where i needed this and then you can get pre-molded so these just hold their shape some of them are beveled shaped with this again the pre-molded you want to reach over your head with the opposite arm pull your ear up and out you want to put it in place and something that's really uh, that fits well if you kind of pull on it slightly you'll feel that pressure Mm-hmm. on your eardrum you'll you'll feel almost a suction and that's what you're looking for you want something that's really going to fit tight and these also depending on the package you know make sure you're looking at the label you're going to get about a 30 decibel reduction and that's what you're looking for mm-hmm. and then you have the earmuff style and this is just cups that you place over your ear you kind of hold on to them and adjust the headband up and down you don't have to reach over your head no mm-hmm. it, you, you don't look as weird with this one <laughs> so 3m is probably one of the highest rated and probably the most common you'll find in hardware stores these don't provide as much protection in general really so a lot of the models i looked at were only about a 20 decibel reduction so again hmm. look at the label i would think these would be better you would think so yeah it's odd but the evidently the the foam plugs and the pre-molded they just they fill up the ear canal so yeah. well that they do a better job i guess you're shoving something into your ear <laughs> right you want to use earplugs or muffs for power tools and most of your gas operated tools circular saws drills chainsaws reciprocating saws so again with this research doctors are finding that hearing damage is cumulative so you're slowly damaging these nerves and breaking off these hairs in your ear Mm -hmm. which they never realized that over a period of years if you're not using hearing protection you're going to end up with he- permanent hearing loss. So it's well worth, you know, what you're doing these projects. Just throw in earplugs or put some earmuffs on. What about everybody wearing, like, earbuds with their... They say a lot of damage. Yeah, I was reading a couple articles, and they say that it's amazing how much hearing damage you're doing by wearing earbuds and cranking up the volume. So you think everybody's going to be deaf? <laughs> Yeah, Uh, there's got to be a niche here for for, for something. (laughs) And with decibels, going up 10 is doubling the noise. So Yeah, the scale on decibels was amazing. I I never knew this. Yeah, so 70 decibels is twice as loud as 60 decibels. Hmm. Now, to protect your lungs, you can get dust masks. So if you're sanding, scraping, grinding, putting any particles into the air, even Mm -hmm. say if you're using like a blower and sweeping... You should be using a dust mask. Again, some of this this damage is cumulative. 
A lot of particles, depending on what they are, can get in the lung and cause scarring and permanent damage. So there's seven different classes of dust mass that's approved by the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health. Mm -hmm. They're recommending an N95 for most projects, but you have N95, and that's filtering out 95% of the particles in the air. You have an N99 filtering out 99%. You have an N100 that filters out 99.9% of the particles. <laughs> And then you have something called R95, and this is resistant to oil, and it will also filter out 95% of the particles. Mm -hmm. You have a P95, and this is strongly oil resistant, filtering 95% of the particles, a P99, and a P100. Mm -hmm. You want a mask with two straps rather than one, the one strap or the cheapies, and then you want something with, with a valve. So every time you exhale, it doesn't push it off your face. <laughs> and then the, the wire around your nose, you want to mold this to your nose, so really shape it to get a, a good fit. And then the mask should slightly expand and contract when you're breathing. Mm -hmm. So you should have a, it feels like you have a nice tight fit. Now, if you're working on projects where you're releasing VOCs, like paint or... Well, you should explain what a VOC is. So VOCs are volatile organic compounds. These are, are, are carbon-based chemicals that evaporate at room temperature. Mm -hmm. So varnish, stain, strippers, pesticides, herbicides. All the good stuff. <laughs> right. Uh, you definitely want a respirator, and you're going to have some type of cartridge that's going to filter this out. It's usually a carbon-based cartridge. Mm -hmm. And the 3M paint project respirator was rated very high for just basic home improvement projects all around the house. Mm -hmm. It's a OVP95. So this is filtering out organic vapors and 95% of the particles that are in the air. Because it's pretty wild. If you look at the warnings on some of these chemicals, they talk about permanent brain, nerve, and lung damage. <laughs> so it's well worth protecting yourself with a respirator. Yeah, you should always have earmuffs on, eye protection, gloves, and a respirator. <laughs> you got to be prepared, right? <laughs> so with your respirator, you want to make sure that the top strap is resting high on the back of your head, and the bottom strap is actually below your ears at the base of your head and neck, hmm. and you never want to crisscross your straps. I would always use vacuums rather than brooms when you can. Use sawdust collection systems with your power tools, and that's going to help protect you against uh, you know a lot of these particles in the air. Did you know what they used for the first dust masks in ancient Rome? Nope. I was reading a little Pliny the Elder. and he's, why wouldn't you? He said that they used animal bladder skin to protect the workers in the lead mines mm. from this lead dust, which is highly toxic. Yeah, they lead say, is bad. They say that it was amazing how many people went crazy working in the mines. Mm -hmm. And then when lead was first added to gasoline in the 1920s, so that first factory had 49 workers. 32 of them ended up in the hospital from convulsions and delusions, hmm. and five of them died. And wow. it wasn't until 1986 that they outlawed lead in the U.S. Well, I never understood why it said unleaded on all gasoline. <laughs> that's a, I didn't, that's I didn't a good know. thing. Well, right, but I didn't know that lead was in gas. <laughs> yeah, why crazy. did they put it in there? So, in, in well, they found that it stopped the engines from knocking. Engines performed so much better with this lead additive. And, you know, a lot of people say that it really helped with World War II. The airplanes, the tanks, everything ran so much better with this, but just terrible for the environment. Mm -hmm. Wasn't the building called the Looney Building that the, they were making this in? Yeah, yeah, because it, it's amazing. A lot of them went crazy mm -hmm. because of how much damage lead does to the brain. And the guy that invented it, right, he denied everything? Yes, yeah. It, well, in fact, he got sick from the lead additive that he created, <laughs> and he was recovering in Florida while they were doing a debate mm -hmm. whether or not they should outlaw this. And he goes, oh, there's no problem with this, as he's recuperating as far away from his factory wow. <laughs> as he could get. And he's the same guy who came up with the first chlorofluorocarbons as a refrigerant. So very intelligent guy. But the, but the stuff he invented was highly <laughs> toxic to the environment. Yeah, terrible. Mm -hmm. Now, for your gardening, plumbing projects, trim work, any of your flooring projects, if you use a kneeling pad... It's mm -hmm. going to take that pressure and make it much more comfortable on your knees. Right. 
I just bought a large one that mm-hmm. I use for my plumbing projects, like inside kitchen cabinets. Mm-hmm. I put it on the front edge of the cabinet. So not just for your knees. <laughs> True. <laughs> so man, you get beat up when you're underneath there trying to work on the plumbing, and uh-huh. that, that edge of that cabinet is a real drag. So that's very convenient. Some of the top-rated kneeling pads are from DeWalt, Fiskars, and CLC. Mm-hmm. For hardwood floors and laminate floors, if you want to use a knee pad, mm-hmm. I like one with a cloth surface. It's going to protect the floor and make it easy to move around. For tiling, I like something with a hard plastic shell, so it's easy to move forward and backward. And then for heating, for plumbing projects, electrical projects, where you're going to be kneeling in one place for a long time, that flat, square-shaped knee pads with soft rubber Mm -hmm. are going to take the pressure off your knee. And then for the strap itself, I don't like the Velcro straps. They tend to kind of roll and bunch and and peel off. So I really like an adjustable buckle and then it locks onto a post. It's, it's going to give you the most comfortable fit. And it looks very stylish. <laughs> yeah, it looks macho. <laughs> and some of the top-rated knee pads are from DeWalt, CLC, KP Industries, McGuire, and Bucket Boss. If you plan on doing demolition around the house, a good quality pair of work boots are going to keep your feet safe. Also, if you're working with tools like a chainsaw. So you don't recommend flip-flops? No, and I would also get something with a safety toe. Mm -hmm. So these come in three main materials. You have steel, which is very strong, but it's tough in cold weather. It's also heavy. Aluminum, they're lighter, but they can also conduct the cold. I really like the new composites. Mm -hmm. So they're a blend of materials like plastic, carbon fiber, and Kevlar. So they're usually lightweight. They don't conduct the cold. And I would also look for something with a puncture-resistant sole and heel, oil resistant and slip resistant. When I was younger, I was taking martial arts and they decided to remodel their school. Mm -hmm. And so we started just tearing down it. They asked for volunteers and I volunteered. So was it part of your training like the Karate Kid? (laughs) Yes. I learned how to defend myself with tools. (laughs) And so we were tearing down all of these studs. I backed up, I was holding a sheet of drywall and I had backed up and I stepped on a nail and it went completely through my gym shoe and through my foot. Ew. I mean, it was just brutal, man. And so I pulled it out, and they were. <laughs> so I, I said, "Hey, I got to go get a tetanus mm-hmm. shot. I got to, you know, I got, I got to go to the doctor." And they're like, "Here, let's pound on it a little bit." And they're trying to make it bleed more. And I'm like, uh, "You know, I got to get to the doctor." So I wasn't, I wasn't in for the ancient wisdom of how to, how to take care of a, a, a nail wound. But a sole with a puncture resistance is really nice to have. <laughs> What are some top-rated companies? So Dr. Martens, Timberland, Carhartt, Justin, Red Wing, Wolverine. And Wolverines are known for being very flexible. And then I picked up those gravity defiers, which are very flexible also. Keen and Caterpillar were all rated very high. Hmm. Do you have anything else to add? I would say for projects around the house, I'd have a good pair of leather gloves, jersey gloves, something chemical resistant. And you then, know, just on the glove topic, I bought a box of those uh, disposable latex gloves. Yeah, it's great. They so really handy come in have. handy. Yeah, for a ton of projects. Well, even like when I'm cooking, you know, if I'm dealing with jalapenos. Uh, <laughs> That's great. Yeah, but a painting projects so when you're cleaning out the vacuum cleaner. Yeah, great to have that around. And uh, along with those basic gloves, I would add an anti-vibration, depending on the tools you're using, and then heat or cut resistant. Mm-hmm. I'd have a pair of chemical-resistant Z87 goggles, some type of earplug, so either the pre-molded or even like a bag of those disposable foam plugs I used to always carry, and I liked them, a quality dust mask, and then I would add a respirator to that if I'm doing projects with chemicals, Mm -hmm. and then just a a good quality kneeler really makes a lot of projects around the house much more convenient, Right. and then get a first aid kit. (laughs) (laughs) Let's wrap this up. You can check out our book, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, on Amazon. That's book one. We're in the process of writing book two. Very slowly. (laughs) You can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes or Stitcher. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. If you'd like to email us, you can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Deep, deep,
Don't clap up the chip with